The Xenomorph is the perfect apex predator, a highly evolved killer that's terrorized the galaxy for years. But today, well, there's one man standing in their way, and he's terrorized a whole galaxy before too, Darth Vader. Could he stop a Xenomorph invasion, defeat a Xenomorph hive all by himself? Well today, that's what we're gonna find out. Starting out, let's take a little closer look at Darth Vader. And the first thing that we gotta recognize is that if we truly wanted to use Vader in his prime, then we would use this version of Vader. Anakin Skywalker was the most powerful Jedi in over a millennium, and he had unprecedented power in the Force. Our Revenge of the Sith, he was more powerful than anyone on the Jedi Council, even Master Yoda. Even Darth Sidious had to concede that Anakin was potentially more powerful than him. And during the duel on Mustafar, this was Vader at arguably the height of his power. He's the chosen one. But then he was defeated by Obi-Wan, he caught on fire, had like half his body cut off by this point, and was put inside the cybernetic suit keeping him alive. And according to George Lucas, lost a lot of his power and potential in the process. Now that he's half man and half machine, he lost a lot of the ability in the force because there just isn't as much human left. So where before he had the potential to be twice as powerful as the emperor, now he's operating at maybe 80% of the emperor's power more on par with Darth Maul and Count Dooku. It also messed him up as a lightsaber fighter too. He lost and had to relearn a lot of the skill and ability that he had as Anakin, and definitely lost all that self-confidence that he had. Of course, there are other things to suggest that this isn't the case at all, and Darth Vader actually did get more powerful after putting on the suit and that his prime was really around Return of the Jedi. Like he lost his first fight against Obi-Wan Kenobi, first few fights really, but by the time that New Hope rolls around, well Vader was powerful enough to beat him. And it wasn't just the fact that Obi-Wan was older now and couldn't fight as well with a lightsaber. One, because Obi-Wan had killed Darth Maul while in this same state but two, because they were also having a force battle at the same time during this fight. We just couldn't see that playing out with our eyes. But Old Ben was wearing out and losing the fight before the fight even began. Just by being around Vader's presence in the force was enough to tire Obi-Wan out. He had been growing more and more powerful in the dark side of the force tapping into a whole new power stream than before. And he's actually come to believe that his injuries only made him stronger and increased his connection to the force. His pain fed his hate and his anger. His hate turned into strength, suggesting he's still becoming even more powerful as Vader. So definitely a debate there. But honestly, just because we'll have access to a lot more cool stuff, we're going to say his prime is Return of the Jedi. Darth Vader has been consistently called one of the deadliest Sith in history, one of the most powerful entities in the galaxy, and someone with the potential to rival or even possibly overthrow the Emperor himself. And this kind of did come to fruition. He did kill the Emperor, even if the death didn't really stick. His force power manifests itself in a lot of different ways, from telepathy to creating force barriers or amping himself with force rage, but his primary has to be telekinesis. He's able to tear apart adats, bring down trees the size of buildings, or even bring down huge buildings themselves. His raw power is absolutely insane. And he's not necessarily just a bull in a china shop either. Darth Vader has pretty substantial control over everything around him. He's even able to force choke someone from all the way across the galaxy. But it doesn't just stop there. 
outside of his insane connection with the Force, Vader is also a tremendously gifted and deadly fighter. He's impossibly strong, and he can use this in a fight, easily overpowering other Jedi or lightsaber fighters. He's surprisingly fast. Even with his robotic armor, he can block pretty much all attacks coming his way, and it's even been said that he's faster than the Emperor himself. Then where Vader shines is his durability, which makes sense, he's already missing half of his body and replaced it with metal. And even before that, he was still pretty good at enduring pain. Vader can legit walk through blaster fire, walk through explosions. It almost doesn't even phase him for the most part. He was even able to take Palpatine's Force Lightning. This is an attack powerful enough to have Maul crying on the floor and begging for mercy. Maul. The guy who feeds off of pain to make him grow stronger in the force and survived literally being cut in half. Palpatine's lightning had him screaming out, but when Sidious hit Vader with enough lightning to make his skeleton show up through the armor, I don't even know how that one's possible, well Vader just kept on pushing, determined to kill him. Then there's just straight his skill. He's the best duelist the Empire has, and fights with a unique and unpredictable style that actually takes bits and elements from all combat techniques. He got more and more skilled between A New Hope and Empire Strikes Back, and then between Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi, to the point where it was said he was unparalleled in terms of pure skill. He had no equal putting him above the likes of Obi-Wan, Luke, and maybe even the Emperor himself. The most dangerous living thing in the universe, the Xenomorph is the ultimate apex predator, a parasite that's hell-bent on carving a path of destruction throughout the galaxy. And you're gonna wish this thing kills you with its teeth and claws and tail. It's better than being forced to help create one of its young. Now there are a lot of different variations of xenomorphs out there in the cosmos. For this video here, we're just going to be focusing on the drone aliens, which is the most common form. Xenomorphs are incredibly strong and powerful. They're able to easily one-shot people with their attacks, even armored soldiers with futuristic tech. And they definitely seem to have a thing for ripping people in half or tearing off limbs. And that's just scratching the surface they're able to easily tear through metal like it's nothing, even shaking buildings or plowing through armored doors and walls. They're also stupid fast. They're incredibly agile. They're regularly able to leap around and surprise prey with just how fast they're able to move. And it doesn't just stop there. Some xenomorphs have legit been seen dodging bullets. They're straight up bullet timing. I told you they were fast. And really, they don't even need to be able to dodge bullets because they're more than tough enough to take them. It appears they can feel bullets with enough shots, they're going down, but by the time you're penetrating their armor, well the Xenomorph has already got its hands on you, so really what's the point? They're able to quickly recover from being hit with pulse rifles, can take automatic gunfire and shotguns like it's nothing. They're even able to keep on attacking through explosive ammo. And it doesn't just stop there either. They're able to shrug off most explosions they find themselves in. And blunt force attacks do basically nothing. And it's not just that these aliens are incredibly durable, but man, they're just incredibly resilient too. Absolutely nothing is going to stop them from trying to kill you. Their body can be broken and useless, limbs missing and all shot up and everything. The Xenomorph still is going to continue charging and continue trying to put down its prey. And it has a ton of different ways that it can kill its prey too. Teeth, claws, tails, all of it are incredibly deadly and dangerous. They're able to absolutely gut people and slash right through their bodies. 
Their tails can pierce right through soldiers with heavy armor. They're actually easily strong enough to just throw people around with their tails too. And their mouth is exceptionally deadly. With their secondary hinged jaws, well, they can basically punch right through people with their mouth, breaking bones, absolutely ripping them to pieces. It's brutal to watch. Then, of course, there's the infamous acid blood. It can cut through anything, from flesh and bone to metal. And the xenomorph actually knows how to use it in a fight and use it to its advantage. It also allows the alien to claim a lot of kills from the grave. Because even if the xenomorph is killed, well that means its blood is usually splattered all over the place. And it's currently eating away at whatever managed to kill it. So who wins here? Can Darth Vader take down not just one xenomorph, but an entire xenomorph infestation? Well I think the obvious answer is that of course Darth Vader can take down just one xenomorph. Even for as fierce and deadly as they are, the Force and a lightsaber are a hard counter to everything the Xenomorph brings into a fight, and Darth Vader is one of the best with both. The Xenomorph relies on up-close combat where they can rip into their prey, and if they get injured in the process, well they're technically still injuring their prey too with the acid blood. That's not going to work with a lightsaber. The lightsaber will be able to slice right through them. Only a very few rare metals are able to stop the blades and xenomorphs aren't that tough. The lightsaber should cut right through them and in the process it's going to cauterize the wound, meaning that acid blood shouldn't go spewing everywhere. Now that's what should happen, but that's treating acid blood as normal blood. It's possible the wound doesn't cauterize, and acid still goes all over the place. But that's not enough to put Vader down on its own, because it's not actually going to hurt him. He's pretty much all robot and metal, and maybe the acid blood damages the suit, but Vader has kept on fighting with a severely damaged suit before. And then of course, there's the Force. Like we said, a xenomorph relies on getting up close and personal. The Force is a great counter for that because Darth Vader can push it back and send it flying with just a thought. And he's done this too many times to even count. Vader has some of the most impressive Force showings in all of Star Wars. It's going to be light work for him to send a xenomorph flying backwards. And it's definitely not a stretch to say that Darth Vader could crush a xenomorph with the Force or simply a good Force choke taking it out that way. Or maybe combine the two, keep the xenomorph suspended in mid-air, then chop it in half with his lightsaber. So then what about a xenomorph hive? Well again, I think this is going to be relatively easy for the Dark Lord of the Sith. The only difference between one xenomorph and a xenomorph hive is just simply numbers and the possible addition of the xenomorph queen. And numbers are no problem for Vader. He's a one-man army. He's actually consistently proven that he can take down armies by himself. And again, a lightsaber and the Force are pretty much perfect weapons to fight Xenomorphs, even whole groups of the aliens. The Force is going to make sure that Vader isn't swarmed and can't recover, because he can just blast them all off with just a thought. The lightsaber is a one-shot insta-kill with every swing and it prevents the acid blood from coating Darth Vader. So it nerfs one of the Xenomorph's greatest advantages in a fight. Even the Queen shouldn't necessarily be too much work for him here. Darth Vader actually has quite the history of taking on big, gigantic monsters in the past. And a lot of them are a whole lot bigger and a whole lot more powerful than a Xenomorph Queen. In fact, Darth Vader has seen before defeating alien hordes actually a lot similar to Xenomorphs. Like Darth Vader has personally fought against lilac hordes, their gigantic insect aliens with blaster-proof skin are incredibly aggressive and powerful. Well, Vader was dropped into a lilac nest before and slaughtered hundreds of them, including the giant lilac 
queen. Basically, Darth Vader has a history of doing this. And for as scary and threatening as a xenomorph is, it's nothing compared to the power of the dark side. Yes, Darth Vader could defeat a xenomorph hive, and he might just make it look easy while doing it. But what do y'all think? Sound off in the comments down below. I know you're gonna have thoughts and feelings on this one for sure. If you stuck around this long and made it to the end of the video, that's amazing. Thank you so much for watching and for supporting us. And if you want to go subscribe, well, go subscribe. You're going to see more videos like this one every single week. I'll see y'all then. I'll see y'all next time.